Hi there everyone, I'm once again with Sean Prosser here at the Royal Astronomical Society Library. Normally we're looking at books and globes of the moon and maps of stars, but today we're looking at a great big quilt. Have a look at that. Not just any quilt though, it's a space quilt. Sean, tell me the story behind this work of art. Back in 2020, it was our bicentenary. We were founded in 1820. Our former membership officer and master quilt maker, Annie Hogan, had this brilliant idea. She was inspired by a solar system quilt made in the 19th century that's currently at the Smithsonian Museum. And just the whole history of quilting as a community activity that brings people together to commemorate events. And she said, let's have an RES community quilt project to commemorate our bicentenary. Your former membership officer was also a master quilt maker. Excellent. Yeah, so, she, <laughs> so she's like initiated this project. She invited not just our fellows, but anyone who's interested in quilt making or anything, just have an idea, contribute a quilt square that has something to do with astronomy or geophysics. And, and the original plan was to have a series of community quilting sessions here at Burlington House on the premises. But it wasn't just the bicentenary of the RES that took place in 2020. Uh, there were some other world events which put pay to any kind of in-person socialising for a while, but Annie just took it to Zoom. We had a series of Zoom quilting sessions. Yep. And the feedback that we've had from people who took part in those sessions, whether they were members, you know, solar physicists, whether they were people who are really skilled at quilting, or people that have no idea how to barely use a needle and thread, mm -hmm. was what a lovely escape from the reality of day-to-day -day life it was. This 100 square quilt has come into the collection now, and to me this is the most important document, not just of the bicentenary, but also of what our community went through during the pandemic. There's a hundred pictures here. We could talk about loads and loads of them. We won't do all of them, of course. I'll ask you about this one first, though. That's your square. Yes. What have you made here? I was inspired by Caroline Herschel's discovery of nebulae, some of which we now know to be globular clusters. And I learned about globular clusters from Annalisa Valley, one of our members who's also the first Caroline Herschel lecturer. Full disclosure, in my mind I had, oh yes, Caroline's rose, the globular clusters discovered by Caroline Herschel. But in practice I was just placing them incredibly randomly. Okay. It was a really zen thing to do. I didn't read a single book over the whole pandemic, but this is something that I was able to finish. I like this one. It's quite technical. They haven't gone arty. They've gone like, let's just do an actual plot. 19 July, 1984. We've got a little map and key here that can help us. That's by Sheila Peacock. The Great British Earthquake of 1984 seen from afar. Yeah, yeah, Sheila Peacock's a geoscientist. She uses remote sensing to look out for phenomena. Okay, this one's lovely with the prominence coming off the sun. Who's made this one? Hilda Bowler? Yep. Coils of magnetic field lines. That's a really nice one. Nice one of the moon. You know I love the moon. There's a nice connection with that. That's the cyanotype. Oh, of and course. John Russell's blue moon. So that's based on a drawing of the moon by John Russell, who we made an earlier video about with his globes and pictures. Watch the earlier video. He was a real moon buff. I see Jupiter gets to mention a few times. A few telescopes. Look at that one with all the aurora in it. Isn't that clever? A no, dinosaur? Gorgeous. I didn't see that. Yeah, that's why Helen Cluse and they're the um, asteroids or... Yeah, whatever, comets raining might down. Have put paid to the dinosaurs. That's a hairy comet there, that's quite clever. Love it. There's so many different techniques. Have you got a favourite? We won't tell anyone. I really love the galaxy on the top row. A different perspective. Kate Arkless Gray yep. did that one. I really like that one with all the lines on it, which is Peggy Ogilvie, potentially hazardous asteroids. Ah, so that's a plot of all the asteroids that could be coming our way, maybe. Yeah, we have to be constantly vigilant for the near-Earth objects. All right, James, which is your favourite? Oh, I like this one with the trails. Okay, that's by Hazel Brightman. That's a meteor shower. Are there like people there? Oh yeah, there's, there's yeah. people watching. I didn't see that. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice mixture of science-iness, artiness, and like a bit of kind of ceremonialness too. You know, we've got like the RAS logo and yeah. stuff like that. So it's a lovely thing. 
What is going to happen to this? What is its fate? Are you going to take it home and use it on your bed at home? Or? <laughs> um, the very idea, no, this no. is a, a, an important document now. We want it to go on display. It will be loaned very briefly to the Royal Society for an event, mm -hmm. which might well have taken place by the time this video is published. But it's also important that the quilt gets a chance to, to rest, be folded carefully away and have a lie down in a darkened room between exhibitions. Okay, well there you go. I think that's the first quilt we featured on Objectivity. It's definitely the first space quilt. Here you can see he's used a huge O and some asterisks to show not just Jupiter, but what he thought were stars next to it. And night after night during his observation campaign, here's Jupiter again. But the positions of the stars have changed. Now, the stars don't move. But yeah. yet we've got these little stars around Jupiter that are yeah. moving almost every night. So he had this fantastic insight that these were actually satellites 